Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. You're tuned in to the NFL on EA Sports. Confidence is never a question when it comes to wide receivers, and these two are no different. It's the Dolphins going up against the Jets. With that, it's time to hook up with our commentators in the booth as we turn it over to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, EA Sports coverage of the NFL finds us at MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey. A short time ago, the Jets' defense introduced to this crowd, and one of the biggest ovations was for the big man, Leonard Williams, as he and his mates get set to do battle with the Miami Dolphins. And we say hi again, one and all. Brandon Gaughton here as we count you down to kick off. And I turn to my partner, that's Charles Davis. And Charles, I know even a former defensive back like you can admire some of the receivers in the game today. And Larry showed us a couple that are very likely to stand out in this one. Yeah, and it's hard for me to admit that I actually admire receivers. <laughs> but with their acrobatics, with their speed, with their moxie, and the way they go up and get the football, they can change the outcome of a game in an instant. As of this morning, summer officially over. It's time for autumn football, and we're underway on EA Sports. Jakeem Grant now to return. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. So here come the Dolphins now as they get set to take over on offense. And a glance here at the man calling the plays under center, their 6'4 quarterback. the Boise State alum, Jay Ajayi. And he'll get this one up to the 26. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. A look now at the Miami offense. I know we don't like to get totally bogged down in numbers, but Miami was 24th in offense in 2016. Should not have been a surprise, though. Brand new coaching staff, brand new offense. Took a little while to get going, but by the end of the year, they were starting to look like a really potent attack. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Ajayi. And he'll push his way forward to about the 32. Call it a gain of five there on the run, but they'll remain a yard or two short here with third down coming up. And the defense for New York. This defense is well-respected around the league, and in 2015, they were ranked fourth overall in total defense. You move ahead to what they did last year, it looks pretty good on paper. 11th overall, just outside the top 10, but that collection of talent didn't pay off in the wins column. The team went 5-11, and 11, and they're looking to get all these pieces together and put this talent back on display. Now it's Ajayi, and he'll get this up only to about the 33. Give him a couple on the run as it brings up a fourth down. We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well, but when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you've got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him, and some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. In his third year now, here's the putter, Matt Darr, to kick this away. Back deep for the Jets, Jalen Marshall. <laughs> Pushes past him. A well-hit ball there. 50 yards on the punt, three on the return. And the Jets take possession. Josh McCown, the Jets taking the field. Tough go for them in week two out in the Golden State. McCown himself, 166 yards and two touchdowns in that 25-point defeat. And you're just trying to figure out how he can continue to make plays. You know, were those playmakers on offense that can help Josh McCown move this offense forward in any way? 
Matt Forte at running back? Do you throw it to Robbie Anderson out wide? Who's it going to be? Can Jermaine Kearse get integrated into the offense? The Jets need a lot of help, and they need it fast. Here's Matt Forte with his first carry. And a big collision there as he winds up flat on his back at the 17-yard line. Good luck trying to get your running game going against Ndamukong Sue. I mean, he is so strong. Just trying to move him, take one guy, two guys, whatever. I wish you a whole lot of luck. He usually converts an offensive running game into rubble. So now 11 yards to go for this offensive unit. It's second down. They stay on the ground. Forte again. Just a couple on the pickup there, and now it's third down. The offensive starters now for the Jets. The struggles of the New York Jets offense in 2016 were well documented. They struggled to run it, struggled to throw it. A lot of that because of inconsistent quarterback play. A big reason why they ended up 26 overall in offense in the NFL and went from 10 and 6 in 2015 to 5 and 11 in 2016. McCown on third down. And he's got a new one. A big third down conversion with a gain of 28. Anunwa was the Jets' second leading receiver last year, had 58 catches, only one behind Brandon Marshall, who, of course, with the Giants now. A breakout season for him, a big bodied guy. Many thought that he's more restricted to moving the chains, had an ability to get downfield and make big catches as well. So the offense has it first and 10. The count looking to throw. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far at second down. And a look at the starters for the Miami defense. In 2016, Miami was 29th overall in total defense. Not a number that's going to excite them or one that they can hang their hat on. But what redeemed them last year was their third down defense. Fourth best in the NFL. And as we all know, that's the down that you really point to and target. Get off the field on third down. Unable to connect on the first down pass play. Now it's second down. Working from the gun, McCown. And the Dolphins rush gets home, down he goes. Dolphins bring on an extra defensive back on third down. From the gun, it's McCown. Left side complete, Safarian Jenkins. The completion there winds up a wash, and it'll bring up fourth down. And that's when it's fun to play defense, when you're able to diagnose a play right from the beginning, get all your guys to the football and spill the play. That's when you have a lot of fun playing on that side of the ball.
On is the second year man from Sam Houston State, Lachlan Edwards, to punt it away. Jakeem Grant back deep for Miami. And great special teams work here. This is knocking on the door of the five. They'll spot it at the six yard line. comes the Dolphin offense now as they get set to take over here. Well, they're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. Very tough spot here for the offense to start. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Got a man open. That's Devontae Parker complete. And able to get it here to about the 16-yard line. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Well, that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. And he hits his target. It's Kenny Stills. And he'll finally be taken out of bounds just past the 40. It's a big play there for Miami. 43 yards. So the defense blitzed. A nice job picking that up, completing the pass. And how in sync was the quarterback in his center on that play? They saw the blitz made the appropriate calls, got the line engaged, because now they know there are going to be extra guys coming at the quarterback, so they got their assignments down pat and kept them away from him, and he's able to step up in the pocket and fire one now for a really good strike. Now the offense lining up first and ten. Now a play fake here on first down. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Sheldon Richardson from his outside linebacker spot. He comes up to drop him for a loss of 10. Well, that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. Yeah, blink of an eye. That happened fast and a big sack. Doesn't get a lot out of it, but he is able to keep the feet in bounds. That catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. Can you do any more work or make it more dramatic for not much gain than what we just saw there? Did you see how his toes got down? Tip tap, tip tap, got him down. But what did he get out of it? He sold the sizzle. He just had no stake. <laughs> I mean, was it one yard? Yeah, you plays like that, you at least expect a first down there, just one yard. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. And he's got room. And he'll slide down to avoid the tackle. A gain of 19 on third and 18, and that'll move the chains. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. They run with a Jai. And he'll get about three as he's brought down to the 28. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, 
hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blows. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. And down he goes. They sack him back right around the 41-yard line. Steve McClendon never giving up. He's able to keep working and get him for a loss of 12. play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. Here we go now. Three, 19. Now back to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. Sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. So now on comes the field goal unit, and wow, this is no ordinary try here. They'll spot it at the 47, so call it a 57-yard attempt. And this is good from 57 yards out. That was bombs away right there. So the scoring drive encompasses nine plays, but the net gain, three points. And you're going to have drives like that in this league. Sometimes you just got to take the three and move on. Always better than nothing. Now it's Franks following the made field goal to send it away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. Now the Jets offense about set to take over as they head onto the field. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trite expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. The drive begins with a run by Forte. And they're able to get this one across the 35. It'll go as a gain of 11 and a Jets first down. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. And if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. So it'll be first down here after the run. Now McCown. And complete over the middle, Safarian Jenkins. And he takes this one down all the way near the 30. That goes for a gain of 31. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that and have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, That'll drive a team towards a victory. And now a first down following that long gain. Forte gets the handoff from McCow. And he gets stopped up at the 31 after a gain of maybe a yard. 
Nice job by that defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. So second and nine, the defense looking to put them in a bad spot here. Again they run, again it's Forte. He winds up getting only a couple there, down to the 29. I once had a defensive player in the NFL tell me, if I beat and dominate the guy across from me, I'm helping my team. Well, winning one-on-one -on -one battles is always a part of the game, but when you have good team defense, as we just saw there, of one broken tackle, but he didn't get away because the rest of the guys arrived to put him on the ground. Now a run. This is Bilal Powell. And he'll maybe get back to the line of scrimmage, but no more than that. No gain there on the play, and that's going to leave him with a fourth down. Cameron Wake, one of three NFL players in the last decade to have 10 or more sacks at the age of 34-plus. The other two, Julius Peppers, John Abraham. He makes game-changing plays as well. Nine forced fumbles in the last two seasons. So on fourth down, out comes the field goal unit for Todd Bowles. From the left hash, this from 46. And this one is going to just tuck into the bottom left corner as he gets it to go. And that will tie us at 3-3. Spent three years as the kicker for the Arizona Cardinals. Now in New York on the big stage, kicking for the Jets. 2015, he was great. 28 of 31 on field goals last year. 21 of 28, trying to rebound. And you remember, it was the season opener, a chance to beat the New England Patriots, where he missed a makeable field goal, and I think that knocked him off the rails for the rest of that season. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. Now a hit and a loose football. And I think he was able to get back on it. He was. So they will get the ball after all, but that could have been a disaster. I didn't do this in college, but I did it in high school. When you return kicks <laughs> and you lose it yourself, the panic that goes through you and the determination to get the ball back I don't even know how to describe it. And I think we just saw an example there. Yeah, and the relief when you get it back <laughs> like he did. Yeah, you go to the sidelines, you know you're going to get yelled at, but you can handle it because you got the ball back. play action here on first down. He's going to look deep now for Landry. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. One of the toughest things about playing defensive back is pattern reading, trying to figure out what they're doing. And on that one, they had to fly. Just sending the guy downfield with the in route accompanying it, what people call a dagger route, trying to hit the guy underneath after the clear out. In this case, though, they're not able to get it done. Yeah, they said forget the underneath route. They went for the guy on the fly, but as you said, incomplete. Here's a giant. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on that one as it brings up a third and ten. And he had a nice play there from his free safety position to hold him to nothing. And, Brandon, remember when the free safety was always back away from the line of scrimmage? That's changed. They always <laughs> that changed in a big way. The way we see it now, they're almost mirrors between the free safety and the strong safety. One will be up, one will be back, or sometimes both will be in the same spot. On that play, free safety was there, no gain. And he's got his man. That's Landry. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. They give him 27 yards on the third down conversion. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. 
And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. Fresh set of downs here. And before they can run another play, the clock hits triple zeros. And time is up on the first quarter. Three all the score. And we will return to MetLife Stadium after this. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Back now with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. Second quarter begins with the Dolphins in possession of the football. And they've got it here with a first down. This is a Jai. And he's got it across midfield and down to about the 47 yard line. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, gotta like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? Play fake. He'll look to throw. Try to lay one up deep. Into heavy traffic and it's intercepted. Picked off by the rookie from LSU, Jamal Adams. Past the 10 to the 11-yard line, and that's where the return stops. Oh, well, timing is everything on a route like this. He tried to drive that football into a tight spot. And if you're a little early or a little late, chances are there's going to be someone there. And sure enough, this one's going the other way. Now the Jets offense gets ready to head back on the field. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I, I like the way you, you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. They start on the ground with Forte. And some room for him there as he'll take this up to about the 15. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Tough running there. That's a hard-earned four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't fill up the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second down. On second down, here's McCown. Over the middle. It's incomplete. Marshall, the intended receiver. And that takes us from second to third down. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them. And not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they're going to have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily fell incomplete. From the gun on third, McCown. Safarian Jenkins, right side. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. Here's Lachlan Edwards now, standing right on his own five-yard line. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. <laughs> and when it's said and done, it's a 58-yard punt, and it'll be Dolphin football. 
The Dolphins offense now heads back on the field. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. Of course, they'd like to forget the inning, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, that does them no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. Finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. Try to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw to the right side here. The tight end, Thomas. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. That throw good for four. It's second down. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up, boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll get about three here as he's out to the 30. The Dolphins on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and four. Here you go now. Three, 19. Ah! The play action fake. They'll look to throw. And he's caught on the sideline, but he's not going to have a first down. They say he was out of bounds. So a big call there. That brings up fourth. Well, third down, he tried to stay in bounds, did all he could. He caught it, but was led a little bit too far. Yeah, and that's always difficult, isn't it? Because you know half of your body is trying to stay behind while the other half is reaching out, trying to catch the football. The top half worked. It was the bottom half that was in question. This one away by the punter, Dar. And this will be taken at the 13. Oh, look at the juke. Well, he wasn't too far from breaking that. Officially, give him 15. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Here's the Dolphins' defense as they head out to set up shop. Their stay on the field last time was short-lived with a three and out. See if they can get some more of that. And ordinarily, you want to be on the field playing, right? But three and out, that's almost gold to a defense. Get to the bench, get some rest. Turn the ball over to your offense. We'll see what they can do here. See if they can force another three and out. Right, here we go. Ah! McCown now on first down. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. That's good for a jet first down, a gain of 13. This is Forte, and he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Officially, no gain on the play, and it's second down. They were in the 4-3. Mike Linebacker made a great tackle. And when that happens, generally it means that the guys up front, the four down defensive linemen, have absorbed all the blockers and allowed him to run free to the football. He ends up with a textbook tackle. McCown to throw on second down. Sets up the screen to Forte. Oh, and now he bowls him over. And he's out of bounds just before the midfield stripe at the 49. Holding offense. 
So a holding penalty, and that'll send him backwards. You know they're trying not to do that. I mean, we know that, right? We talk to them all the time. But sometimes the defensive guys just put you in awkward situations, and you get caught grabbing their jerseys. penalty it's Forte and he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down no gain on the play this time and it'll be a third and long situation coming up he had a great read there from his free safety position and Charles you know with those guys it's all about their eyes they have to be laser focused yeah I had to fake my way through it when I was playing but now I can see exactly what they're doing and on that play he obviously had no presence to feel like he's being pushed for a pass and without that that allowed him to get up to the line of scrimmage and hold him to no gain it's incomplete took a shot couldn't connect but we quit counting yardage on that one, didn't we? That was truly third and a mile, wasn't it? It was. I thought they might just go underneath, but they didn't. They wanted to get the first down there. Yeah, they tried to pick up the huge chunk unsuccessfully. I'm with you. I would have tried to take some yardage just to gain some field position. Here's Lachlan Edwards now as he's on to punt for New York. This is taken at the 15. Officially, that'll go as a 52-yard punt. Not too shabby. And out will come the offense as they take over. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked Go to so something well, else. and maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. They'll start out on the ground with a James. <laughs> And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. That good for 19 and a first down. I absolutely love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. And he's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers. And they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. Again with a giant. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49 yard line. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll make it second and a foot or so. Well, he appears well on his way to another big game. You remember 2016, partner? He became just the fourth player in NFL history to have three 200 yard rushing games in a season. Two of them were back to back Steelers in week six, Bills in week seven. to the short side left and he'll be taken down at the 44 yard line a solid gain of seven yards that time on the keeper and a first down and this is one of those plays that if you can use it to keep the chains moving it's a good play and not only that it tends to tamp down the pass rushers because they have to recognize this play and stay at home the quarterback uses it well read option keeps it and picks up a first down with some nice running Play action. They'll throw. Oh, look at Thomas wide open. A very solid gain of 27. Nice play call. A little bit of play action right there. If you can get those linebackers to freeze for just a split second, that's usually all the room you need in order to get it to your tight end. A 
on first down, they'll run it on the draw play. And here he'll get it down to the seven. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and it'll be second and very short. It's not an ideal spot to be on first down, but I love that the play caller did not immediately abandon the running game and say, okay, we've got to throw it in order to pick it up. Stayed with the run, was rewarded with a big-time pickup. Now they're in second and manageable. This is Williams, and the stop will come inside the five at the four. Four yards on the play, and that leads to the first and goal. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack, because remember the last drive, they went three and out. This is Williams, and he'll go backwards, losing yardage to the five. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. Wow, that play got shut down in a hurry. As soon as the snap came, you could see defensively they were just closing in. That was going nowhere. Yeah, you count on your offensive line to give you a little bit of space, a little bit of time so you can make a move. There was none there for him. taking it from the five down to the three. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists, and if you're doing it, you're probably going to play action since you ran it twice. But I often think that second down is the time you go play action and throw the ball. I say commit to the run and think about it being four down territory. They'll try to run with a giant. And he takes it into the end zone for the Dolphin touchdown. Jay Ajayi, a three-yard touchdown run. And the Dolphins are in for six. But they decided to run it in and got it done on third and goal. A lot of times, that's a passing play. And the kicker just has to come out for the PAT. He can breathe a sigh of relief as well, right? Although I don't know if he's really breathing a sigh of relief. I think he likes to put three points on his ledger. Now Andrew Frank's on for the point after. And it is up. And it's good. That'll make our score 10 to 3 now. So that drive, 80 yards, nine plays. And it's capped off by a touchdown run by Jay Ajayi. Franks now to kick this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. They'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. And a look here now at Matt Forte. He's had a good chunk of carries. Problem is for very little success. I don't want to put it all on his shoulders, but that's a big reason they're losing right now. Have to be very careful that he doesn't start pointing fingers. Offensive line obviously trying. The defense is doing a nice job against him today. When it's all said and done, it's all about the guy in the mirror. He has to get it done better going forward. We'll see if he can look and do some soul searching now. Matt Forte, a great receiver out of the backfield, was the intended target. And that'll bring up second down. Oh, 
Offense still needing 10 yards. Second down. On the draw, McCown leaves it to Forte. And he'll take it ahead to the 28-yard line. Give him four on the ground there. They're now left with third and six. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get them into a manageable third down because they had incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. Let's go! 319! Throwing his McCown on third down. And he's got a new one. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. And it'll go as a gain of 11 and a Jets first down. And there they went crossing route against the zone defense. What do you think of that? It takes real coordination between the passer and the receiver because you've got to read those zones and where the open spots are and be on the same page with the guy throwing the football. Because sometimes you're throwing it in front of the zone. Sometimes you're throwing it between the zone. Sometimes the receiver's going to just kind of find a spot and what we call sit down and present himself to the quarterback and throw it there. It's a tough read, but when they're in sync, it's really effective. Two minutes to play here in the first half. We'll come back to MetLife Stadium after this short timeout. When halftime rolls around in just a bit, we'll send you to Orlando. You will hear the dulcet tones of Mr. Larry Ridley with our EA Sports halftime report. Does dulcet mean good? Yeah, it's just something that broadcasters say. It's got to be good, right? It's got to be you good. You tell me. Well, it's got to be good if Larry's doing it. So here we go, first and ten now. Working from the gun, McCown. He's going to float this one deep right side. Got a man that's caught at the six-yard line. And he just falls short down at the one-yard line. Now that play will end up on the highlights, and you'll see it all over the place. But what you won't see, the offensive line that bought the extra time that allowed for the big completion downfield, those guys made that play possible. time they say uh-oh as he's going to be stopped behind the line of scrimmage did your high school have that same push them back push them back cheer i was a kicker well it's, it was certainly worked didn't matter whether we were kickers or not that one worked didn't it they pushed him back at his last snap of the ball and boy they created a nice play for themselves would they lose three on that one yeah from the one back to the four So on the other side, they're thinking, gosh, we'd like to get that lead right back. Yeah, thanks for pointing that out. Here I am <laughs> going ahead and tapping out the first half. Oh, There's still time. time. They've got to make a decision about what they want to do on the kickoff, whether they want to let their return guy touch it. Here's Chandler Catanzaro for the extra point. And he'll put it through, and that evens us up at 10 apiece. That time, a six-play drive, and it's finished off by a New York Jets touchdown.
So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. The Dolphins offense now working their way back onto the field. These two teams trading touchdowns here in what has been a back-and-forth first half. And ordinarily, we're trying to figure out how to break out of a stalemate. Here, you're trying to figure out if you can slow someone down while continuing your breakneck pace on offense. I know one thing. The people in the crowd, they're getting their money's worth right now. And the fantasy owners like it. Oh, without a doubt. They're just tallying them up, aren't they? <laughs> they're watching this game. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Kenny Stills, the intended receiver, and now it's second down. Second and ten, he'll look to throw again. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's the one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. The Dolphins on third down. They've hit it 50%, three of six to this point. This is third and ten. counter here's Williams and he'll take this one up close to the 25 yard line now here's a timeout defensively defensive timeout called by the Jets it's just their first so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime so the defense had a chance to catch their breath and now they're back out and ready Here's Matt Dar now as he's on to punt for Miami. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. A good kick, 49 yards, just three on the return. And possession will switch, hands first and 10. The Jets offensive unit ready to get going here. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Forte, and he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Not a big run on the first play of the drive, but that doesn't necessarily mean it was a bad play. Sometimes you're just trying to settle in, get your guys a little bit of contact, and get things moving. So we have reached halftime here at a good one. 10-10 is our score. As we send you down to Orlando, where we check in with Larry Ridley and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Larry. Thanks, guys. We'll get back to you soon for the second half of this tied ball game. But first, let's look back now at this first half of play. So we've got a tie game at half, and you can bet both coaches are in that locker room making adjustments and telling their guys to just keep playing hard like they did in the first half. All right, let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Dolphins now late in the first quarter. Landry's the target here, and he won't be brought down until he makes it to their own 46-yard line. 
third down from inside the 10. Ajaye is going to head outside to the right, and he'd go in for the three-yard touchdown. The Dolphins is up now by seven. Now first and 10. Here the catch is made way downfield, and he'll be tackled at the one-yard line. Later on the drive, McCown's going to find his mark, and this play will go for six. Jets tied up at 10. That'll do it from here in Orlando. Let's get back up to New York as we turn it back over to Brandon Guy. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. Fielded about a yard deep. And this return nets positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. Here's the Jet offense now. They head out to take over. They have a chance to break our tie here as we get a look at the first drive of quarter three. And it's such a tone setter, isn't it? Because both sides trying to seize momentum to begin the half. What do they have dialed up that'll give them an advantage to move the ball downfield? Let's find out what they have dialed up. First and ten, here's McCown. Looking sideline, incomplete. A pretty good coverage there in both of these defenses. They've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it. And in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? And on second and ten now. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? Encroachment defense. They'll step off the five yards. Yeah, partner, you know. Defensive end. He wants to get into the offensive backfield. He wants that get off to be as fast as possible. A little too quick on that one. Second down to the offense needing five yards. Watch 88. Watch 88. All right, here we go. Ah! From the gun, it's McCown. And he almost intercepted it. They haven't picked a ball off yet. That probably should have been their first. And it's third down now. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum. Big play right in his hands. Unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense if that fell harmlessly to the ground. The Jets on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This will be third and five. Shotgun here for McCown. And that will be incomplete as well. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they run successful. Here's Lachlan Edwards now. He's been terrific so far. Yeah. 
<laughs> Just a yard return there after a punt of 49. So here are the Dolphins now. They get ready for their first possession of the second half. Their defense did its job, yielded no points. Now it's the offense's turn. And how much fun is that when you set things up to start a half and you just tell you guys, hey, if you can shut them down, get it back for our offense, we can roll. And they played out perfectly. Now, can the offense do what they wanted to do at the half, which is find those weaknesses and now attack them and score some points. And break this tie. All right, here we go. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Looking left side and completing it to Thomas. And able to get this across the 20 before going out of bounds. The completion good for three, and it's second down. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. And again, this time to the tailback. Up past the 25 to the 26, a gain of five. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. The gain of four that time as the drive continues. I think I saw a lot of shoulders just drop there. And what I mean by that is they finally were able to relax a little bit because that was an important play call. They needed to pick up that first down at this stage of the game. Yeah, couldn't afford another quick drive and out. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Let's go. Three, 19. Now a handoff here to his running back. Trying to bounce it outside, but he's only able to get it back to the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. So nothing there. I don't know that that's all in the back, though. you got to look at blocking there, don't you? I would agree with that totally. At some point, they have to win at the point of attack. Instead, it was the defense getting it done again and holding them to no gain. So they're still at the original line of scrimmage here. Second down and 10. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And they take him down, losing yardage back at the 27. It's a loss of four. Now third down. Partner, I think the easy thing now would be to just abandon the run and start throwing the football at all costs. But I've been in so many games where it doesn't work running the ball, it doesn't work running the ball, and then something pops, and now you get something going. I'm not so sure to just abandon your game plan this early in the second half. The Dolphins on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This is going to be third and 13. All right, here we go. They'll set up a throw. Looks for Parker, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the rookie from Florida, Marcus May. And he brings this one back. It's a pick six and a jet touchdown. The dime. They had six defensive backs there, so go ahead and throw it. He threw it, and it hurt it. It's almost thrown into a blanket of coverage, isn't it? You talk about the best defenders you have are the defensive backs. Six of them on the field, you're almost asking for trouble, and that's exactly what they ran into. Ended up throwing a pick six. Yeah, six defenders and six points. Point after now from Catanzaro. He's got it as they go up by a total of 17 to 10. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, 
navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. That'll be taken in the end zone. Oh, twisting away. And he'll take it back to about the 19-yard line. The Dolphins offense now ready to go back out onto the field. on that one and the Dolphins have a first down. It's really come into vogue to talk about the, the different gaps that the defense tries to attack in an offensive line and most of the time we're talking about blitzes. How many times have you heard double A gap blitz? Well where is the A gap? It's the space between the center and the guards either side. So when you're having a double A gap blitz that's two guys coming through that gap. In this situation though that A gap wasn't open for the defense to exploit. The offensive line took care of it, protected it, and moved the defensive guys out of the way to allow for that nice run. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. The best defensive linemen, they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. They can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. Second down following the run. All right, here we go. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get this up to about the 40. Call it a gain of five that time, and they'll be left with a third and about four. Well, partner, they've been running it well the entire game, and the big guys up front, they're a huge reason why. And now they're reaping the benefits as they continue to open up big holes and gain nice yardage. The Dolphins on third down, not quite 50%, four for nine. Right, this is third and four. Blue 90. Blue 90. Ah! Back to throw. They'll set up the screen. This is Williams. And Miami first down, that one going for a gain of 11. Let's give a little credit there. The offensive play caller sense that the screen pass was available. Whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback, that's when you're thinking about running the screen and using that pressure against the defense. And it worked very well there for a first down. Offense comes to the line now, first and 10. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Demario Davis coming hard on the blitz. He dumps him for a loss of eight. Now, we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight-ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop it. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean, oftentimes the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll get it down here to the 43. That'll be a gain of 15 yards. And they're going to face a third down. Boy, where would these guys be without his performance on the ground? 
That puts him over 100 yards now for the afternoon, and I tell you, he seems to be getting stronger as the day goes along. The Dolphins on third down. They've hit on half of them, five for ten. This time it's third and three. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. And he has Carew. And he's going to be out of bounds down inside the 20 at the 15. A really good pickup of 28 yards. A nice job there, Charles. They picked up the blitz, were able to complete the pass. That had the total feel of a quarterback in control. Red blitz, got him into the right protection scheme so he doesn't get hit back there. He's got a chance to step up with supreme confidence and deliver it downfield for a nice completion. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. Now a first down carry, it's Williams. And all the way down inside the five to the four. 11 more on that one and another first down. This is a very impressive drive, especially when you consider where they started from to now be set up first and goal. Yeah, and some nice running right there. That's what got them the first down. But at this point, I suggest open up your playbook. You can call just about what you want. says the field judge it's ruled incomplete the intended receiver was Jakeem Grant and that'll bring up second down in a flag and I believe a dolphin got going a little early So second and goal here from the nine. And he'll take this from the nine down to about the seven. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action, hit them over the top. This offense so far on third down, they've converted six times and could use a seventh here. This is third and goal. Back to throw here. And he's going to go down. Sack back at the 13-yard line. Muhammad Wilkerson. He's the one that gets him down. It'll be a loss of five, and it'll bring up fourth down. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Now it's Andrew Franks on for Miami. And Franks' kick is good. And that will cut this lead back down to four now. It's 17-13. So three points is the outcome, but probably not what they're looking for given the drive that they were on. Yeah, things were looking good. You had it first and goal, but then the offense sputters a bit, and they're forced to settle for a field goal.
Now it's Franks following the made field goal to send it away. That's fielded in the end zone. Yeah, some might have returned that one. He won't. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start the drive from the 25. Josh McCown ready to head back out there. How do you break down his game so far? Just the one touchdown pass, but sometimes the touchdown pass stat category, that doesn't tell the whole story. It really doesn't. Not until you balance it with the error side. You know, and in this case, he hasn't thrown any interceptions. So a lot of people would call this almost a pedestrian game, kind of a bus driver game. But that's just really wrong. Being a bus driver is a good thing <laughs> if you're running a football team because that means you're in control and you're taking your team to the right places. Yeah, he's been pretty solid. On first down, McCown. The Dolphins get there this time, and they bring him down. Cameron Wake in there to get him his second sack now of the afternoon. And that's his second sack of the game, but this player, disruptive in all phases, whether he's going upfield, coming underneath, you name it. He's a big-time guy you have to block. They fake the give to Forte. Now McCown. They've got his man complete. And he's brought down after a good game. That goes for a gain of 31. Forte, and he's going to be stopped up at about the 47-yard line. A gain of three, second down. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. Here we go with second and seven. They'll run it now out of the gun. Nine yards on the pick up there, and it keeps the drive alive. They're trying to show that they can run the ball, protect this lead, give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. is McCown. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. Second down, here's McCown. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Cameron Wake able to disrupt yet another pass play. His third sack of the afternoon. Now that was just absolute perfect man coverage. Nowhere for them to go with the football. Led to a sack. And that's really difficult to do in today's NFL with all these gazelles running around that you're trying to cover in the secondary. The Jets on third down, lacking much success. Just two for seven to this point. This is third and nine. Hurry up, here we go. Blue ah! Now McCown. 
And he gets it down a yard or two shy of the 30 before he's out of bounds. Call it a gain of five, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. Was that a receiver? <laughs> yeah, actually it was. It was a running back who was a receiver on the play. ike has been spending time in the receiver drills getting his feet down. Well, those guys out of the backfield, they got to be good, agile with their feet. He showed the agility there with a toe tap. No doubt about it. It's like he'd went to ballet school, got the toes down, and stayed in bounds. And the attempt at three will have to come from the other end of the field as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here on EA Sports. It's Jet football as they've got the lead here and we get set to begin quarter number four. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. He'll have the win at his back here in the fourth quarter. And he missed it. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. Everything looked good. Good snap, good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it. And this one winds up no good. And the Dolphins getting set to go here. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. They'll come out throwing here on first down. Going deep here, and that's caught inside the 30. And all the way in for a Miami touchdown. Kenny Stills, 61 yards. And the Dolphins have taken the lead here in the fourth. Might be seeing that one on the highlight shows tonight. The home run ball here in the fourth quarter to take the lead. There's nothing like being aggressive, preaching that to your team and then following through, all the way through. Go ahead and throw one more up there, why not? Been a great game and we are not done yet. Now an important extra point here to stretch this lead to a field goal. He's got it, and this is indeed up to a three-point lead. And they're able to get the connection on the long touchdown pass. And that's one of the easiest drive summaries you'll ever see. One play, touchdown. Here's Franks now to kick this one away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And from back there, a wise move. He'll just sit on this one, and it'll come out to the 25. Here's Matt Forte as he gets set to go and heads back out there. And after a sluggish start, he's really bounced back. The numbers bear that out. And you're a baseball guy, partner. How many at-bats over the course of a baseball season? Oh, boy, four about in a three, game. Yeah, about the four in a four game. Four times 162. 350 or so, right? Sometimes it takes a while for a guy to get going. That's my point. It's not the first few carries. You don't worry about that. As they go along, get that guy lathered up, get those blocking assignments down. Those two-yard gains turn into bigger gains as the game moves along. The count now on first down. 
toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Quincy and noon with that time, and it's second down. They always say the real estate is about location. Well, guess what? When it's a slant route, the quick ones, timing, timing, timing. Got to be able to lead your man with the football. And the timing off right there, threw it behind him. McCown again on second and ten. Throw left side is taken in by Stewart. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. The Jets on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. They're up against a third and one situation. To throw is McCow. And unable to connect. If he had caught it, it would have been a first down. Instead, it's fourth. After watching him drop that slant, I can hear my old coach's voice ringing in my ears right now. You can't run with the ball until you catch it trying to get those rack yards before he secured it. Here's Lachlan Edwards now as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. This is taken at about the 14. A good return there. Call it 13 yards. And out come the Dolphins now. And last time, the formula was pretty simple. One play drive, long pass. That Maybe they just want to do that again, right? And that's exactly how you want to draw things up, whether it's on your grease board, right, in your playbook. One play drives exactly what you want on offense. What they have to be careful of is not having a letdown. It yeah. was really easy last time. They can't expect that going forward. Yeah, we'll see if it's that easy here. to a Johnny to begin the drive. That one good for 10 yards. And that'll bring up a second in just about a few inches here. Where Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage, they've got the football, but they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back in New Paltz, this is by Thema Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go Largo. And what she meant by that is don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless. I am without speech. A handoff as they run the counter play. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. But just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. It's always been funny to me, Brandon, when coaches always talk about on hot days like the one we have here, oh, it's hot for both teams. But when one team has the advantage, when one team is running the ball really well and closing things out, it's hotter for the defensive side, and they sag a lot quicker. Yeah, they say the dog days of August, the heat we're seeing here today, dog days of September, and the advantage right now on the offensive side. Going to give this time to the tailback. Ojai hit. He lost the football. And the Jets have recovered. Well, partner, here's where team football gets tested a little bit because I know the defensive guys were over there chilling on the sidelines, and all of a sudden, they heard the sudden change call because that fumble puts them right back on the field, and they've got to go out and finish the game now themselves. Absolutely. Nursing that slim lead here in the fourth, a costly turnover. Luke McCown and the offense heading out for their next possession. And the stats on the screen tell the story. A great start. This defense, they've made some good adjustments, though. He's fallen off since. You have to like what they did at the half, but you also have to like the fact that they hung in there. Despite the fact they had a tough first half, he was locked in, right? And rocking and rolling. They came out, made their adjustments, got their confidence back. Now they're causing them all sorts of trouble. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got to jump here. Encroachment defense. 
partner, we saw these Dolphins jump off sides a bunch last year. But that's not unusual for those guys like Sue who want to get that quick start into the offensive backfield. And they do make a lot of plays doing that. Intended target the tight end, Austin Safarian Jenkins. That'll bring up second down. McCown to throw on second down. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. So the offense has it first and ten. Here's McCown to throw. This throw caught right around the six. A good pick up there on 20 yards. After that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. Let's go! Three, nine, They'll try to run with Forte. And he is in. Touchdown, New York. Matt Forte taking it in from four yards out. And the Jets have taken the lead here in the fourth quarter. I know we don't talk about it enough. But the intelligence level of the guys up front blocking, the offensive linemen, maybe the smartest guys in football overall. Add in a little bit of athleticism and a whole lot of toughness, you got a lot to deal with, don't you? That's why the guys in the backfield get them really nice Christmas gifts, right? If they're smart, they do. Just a four-play drive that time. And it's capped off by a Matt Forte touchdown run. Zero out now as he'll kick this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And all that work, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. So now here come the Dolphins, and they had the fumble last time that led to a touchdown. That's a no-no. We'll see what they do here this go around. <laughs> a big no-no. Put that in capital letters. Turning it over, the other team takes it down and scores. That can be a deflator for a football team. Now it's up to the offense to get back out on the field and pick things up. Now they're out there. We'll see if they can pick those things back up. across the 30-yard line. Call it a pickup of seven, and that'll make this a second down. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part 
of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. So a challenge is upon us. I tell you, close game, fourth quarter. This is a huge decision. Oh, no doubt about that, partner. A lot has to be riding on this call. And you know, it is a tight one because it has to be indisputable visual evidence in order to change it. Now here's the big question. Do they actually have that evidence? We're about to find out. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. to throw and throw right side complete to Parker and brought down but not before reaching the 45 yard line that one good for 13 at a Dolphin first down I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play because guess what the guy catching the ball he'll get all the credit but how about the people up to block in front of him either fellow receivers or offensive linemen that makes that play a really nice timing play and sometimes it can break big Now the offense lining up first and ten. He'll drop to throw. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. It's a lot of contact going on there. And in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. Second down now after the incompletion. Here we go now. They'll set up to throw. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. And he still doesn't have a catch. We're into the second half. I think it's a little bit of a surprise to me, but that was one he should have caught. Absolutely. That was his best opportunity right there. He dropped it. The Jets will bring in a nickel set as they try to stop this third down. They'll look to throw here. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. And he is knocked down from the side. It'll be a gain of four. And that'll bring up fourth down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. Here's Matt Dar now, as he'll put it away for the fourth time today. a work of art right there. Out of bounds at the two-yard line. And now out come the Jets. And for them, a touchdown their last go-around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. And not great starting field position here for the offense. From his own end zone, it's McCown. He's going to float this one deep right side. 
And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Picked off by Rashad Jones. A critical error there in a tight game in the fourth. All you talk about is taking care of the football, especially with a lead here in the fourth quarter. Turning it over, now the door is open for the opposition. Just in general, when you're passing in the fourth quarter with a lead, no matter at what point, you got to be super careful. Got to be careful, and sometimes you can be so careful that you end up running yourself into an error. A chance for us now to discuss Jay Ajayi. He's been a good workhorse. I know we use the word workhorse a lot, but he's been a good workhorse for him in this one. No doubt about it, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's what you're looking for if you're a back because that means everything's coming together for you. The big guys up front have created space. You've run through it. You've probably gotten some help even from the wide receivers who want to catch passes as opposed to block, but they're helping out too. Yeah, everyone's pitching in. He's had a good game. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Sideline throw. That's caught by Landry. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. That one goes for 24 yards. Right after the turnover, they come out throwing. And that means it's a sudden change situation. We used to practice it on defense. Sudden change, get out there, stop the offense. But you typically run out there a little bit unsettled. I think that's why he came right out throwing the football, hoping to catch him off balance. And he did. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Looking to throw. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. Give him seven on the play, and it'll be second down. And still has a couple plays to go to pick up the first on second down and three. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. So a jump there defensively. It's a killer. Watch the football. Don't move across the line of scrimmage until the ball moves. Fresh set of downs here. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. They'll look to throw here on first down. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Jordan Jenkins coming on the blitz. He gets him for a loss of seven. Brandon, I think you understand the type of afternoon this offensive line is having. It is a long one for them. Long for you to spend it with me. Long for them trying to block those guys. They've given up a whole lot of sacks, and the speed and quickness of that defensive line is eating them alive. snap as they'll look to throw and the hit jarred it loose it's incomplete that would have been a great catch but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way would have been a great play if he'd been able to hold that one in Play action. They'll throw. A swing pass caught. And he'll take this into the end zone for a Dolphins touchdown. 
Leontay Carew, 28 yards. And the Dolphins have taken the lead here in the fourth. So the quarterback drops to throw, looks over, and boom, a guy that wide open, he has to be thinking, wait a minute, this is some kind of a dream. This is too easy. Yeah, a great dream, one you don't want to wake up from. But for the defense, almost feels like there was a bust in coverage. Now an important extra point here to stretch this lead to a field goal. He's got it, and this is indeed up to a three-point lead. Five plays there on that drive, and it winds up in six points for the Dolphins. Here's Franks now to kick this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Josh McCown of the Jet offense heading back out there. And the interception that ended their previous drive, that might be one we look back on and say that was the turning point of this game. Hey, partner, guess what? There's still time for a few more turning points in this ball game. They're only one score down. Yeah, true. We could have some twists and turns. Stay tuned. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And all the way in, touchdown, New York. Quincy Anunwa, 75 yards. And the Jets have taken the lead here in the fourth quarter. And correct me if I'm wrong, that was just a simple fly route, wasn't it? No, there's nothing to correct at all. You've got it down pat. And I just remember as a player, when I'd be in practice sessions and I'd hear nine from the receivers, that meant fly route, go, uh-oh, look out. <laughs> that was the nine, and he just kept going all the way into the end zone for the touchdown. Zero now for the extra point. And that will make this a four-point game. One of the shortest drives you'll ever see. One play, 75 yards, six points. Zero out now as he'll kick this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. Out comes the Dolphin offense now as they get set to take over here. And the points, they have come fast and furious in this quarter. You really don't want to be on the defensive side of the ball right now, do you? Because you're either thinking, my replacement may get an opportunity. <laughs> Your head better be on a swivel. Totally. Or maybe I just need to get out of the game for a while because I just can't slow these guys down. They've got to figure out a way to disrupt these offenses. And typically, one guy makes a big play, and that can help change things. They'll be looking for disruption on both sides right now. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. 
And he finds Parker here, complete. 23 yards on the play. So here we go, first and ten now. Come on now. Green 39. Green 39. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. Catch here, left side, Thomas. And he eventually goes down, but not before reaching the 30-yard line. And a nice gain of 21 yards. Almost not fair. The big guy running the corner route, being able to lean and push and get to where he wants. So how do you stop it? A lot of times you want to have a linebacker on him, a bigger body guy who can handle him physically. But a lot of times that doesn't work as well because his quickness often wins the route. And now a first down following that long gain. To throw and this is caught at the eight and down he goes taking it inside the 10 just shy of the five at the six that one goes for 24 yards this offense can certainly move quickly when they want to three plays three pass completions in the blink of an eye they've got a first and goal almost felt like a lightning bolt hit in this game didn't it for them to get downfield that quickly and now first and goal expect them to attack right here on this play Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he'll take this into the end zone for a Dolphins touchdown. Jay Ajayi, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Dolphins have taken the lead here in the fourth. Uh, he's given him a little jolt, just gave him the lead there, but two TDs now in the game. And that jolt puts them in the lead. What a terrific job by him. He is carrying the ball and simply saying, I want to win. And now he's hoping his defense has that mentality as they try to hang on to that lead. So that drive, four plays, and it's capped off by a touchdown run by Jay Ajayi. Here's Franks now to kick this one away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. Now look at Quincy and Noon one. The rest of the offense heading back out. Seems like the measuring stick for a receiver for a great game is 100 yards. Well, he's well past that now. And as we analyze how he's getting him, that's where it really becomes fun because, let's face it, they keep sending coverage at him, keep trying to put the pressure on, yet he finds ways downfield and finds openings. That's a really crafty receiver. and 10. Here's McCow. Caught Safarian Jenkins right side. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. The completion good for three and it's second down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball.
Under four to go now as the clock runs and they come up on second down. They fake the give to Forte. Now McCann under a heavy rush and down he goes. Koa Misi in from his linebacker spot. He's able to drop him for a loss of about 10. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. Let's go. Three, 19. Here's McCown. And he'll be about a full yard shy of the 20 at the 19-yard line. They'll give him a yard on the play, and that's going to make it fourth down. One score down, here we go. They're gonna go for it here on fourth down. Let's go, Blue Blue Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? Jumpy on the right side of the line. Sometimes when you're on the end, a little bit farther away from the ball, any type of movement will get you to jump, and that's exactly what happened there. Now let's see how yeah, the offense is still out there. They elect to go on 4th and 11. tight end over the middle complete it's a big play that time by the Jets 30 yards See what transpires after this. So it's Jets football as we get you reset here. They come up on a first and ten, desperately needing a score here on what could be their final drive. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Working from the gun, McCown. And his throw is going to be incomplete. He was trying to find our Darius Stewart, and that'll bring up second down. I guess you can't be afraid to take those chances late in the game. He tried to fit that one in there. Nice job, though, defensively. But to your point, it was a nice job of knocking the ball away. But you're also right. You can't be afraid to take those chances. That means your guys going downfield to catch the ball, they've got to elevate their game and come down with these in order to keep your offense moving. On second down, Forte. <laughs> He doesn't find a ton of space following the display of quick feet down just inside the 45. One yard, the official pick up there, so it's going to set up third and nine. They'll look to throw, and they can't get the long connection as it falls incomplete. Fourth down now defensively. Charles, you know, they're just asking this crew for one more stop. And you know that they're feeling the momentum right now. 
but they have to be very careful not to get over exuberant, over excited, and blow an assignment and give up the big first down. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got to jump here. Three five yards as the defense jumps. I know it's an anticipation game for them, but it's also a reaction game, and they reacted poorly on that one. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. This will be from 56 yards out. Kick is not gonna get there. It's short and no good. Well, a pressure kick, a pressure spot, and that one goes big. All right, don't let me pile on here, partner, but you have to think back. It's now a second miss of the game. If he makes both of those, they win this ball game. The Dolphins' offense now heads back on the field. They have the three-point lead. Defense did their job. Now, late game. Although it looks good, you know the coaches, they haven't counted this as a victory yet. I agree with you totally. Big applause for the defense, but no one is taking their headset off on the sidelines. They don't believe this game is over. The offense has to close this one out by taking care of the football. And they'll try to close it out now. Let's go! And he'll give it here to his running back. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game. Now the Jets are going to burn another timeout. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. time to the tailback and he'll get it down here to the 43 and now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense and they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down so a defensive timeout chance to regather regroup and get set as we resume action So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he's got some space here. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. A Miami first down, that one going for a gain of 11. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. Clock counting down toward 40 seconds as they take the knee.
A lot of scoring. There's no doubt about that in this one, Charles. Points, they were not at a premium. They were pretty <laughs> easy to come by. They were, but it was fun, wasn't it? Because both teams finding ways to click. And you know people who love this game. They also love baseball games that are 14 to 11 with three or four home runs mixed in. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. With that, we say so long, everybody.